Have you ever wondered why we have different seasons depending on where you go during a certain time of the year? Or how about why we have certain wind currents? All these things have a lot to do with the way the Earth is shaped and how the sun hits it at a given time. First off, the sun's rays are responsible for heating up the planet. However, because of the Earth's curved surface, the sun rays don't hit everywhere equally. In places where rays hit at an angle, the distance covered might be greater, but the intensity of the light would be less. An easy way to understand this concept is if you took a flashlight and shone it down at a table. Straight down, you would get a different result than if you tilted it. Same goes for the Earth. Unequal light means unequal heating of the Earth. In addition, the Earth has a tilt of 23 degrees, giving us distinct seasons. For example, in June, the northern hemisphere is closer to the sun, which makes it peak summer. The southern hemisphere, however, is farther away from the sun, giving it colder climate. Now, it's important to make a distinction between climate and weather. Climate is the combined long-term effects of temperature and precipitation patterns. It's climate that determines the type of environmental conditions in an area, like whether it's a desert or a grassland. Weather is short-term conditions in a particular area, whether it's sunny or cloudy or rainy. While weather can be used to determine things like what outfit to wear on a certain day, long-term pattern, or climate, is what scientists study to measure climate change. Also, the amount of rainfall in an area determines its climate, which contributes to the type of vegetation that will grow there, and consequently, the biome. Now that we have an understanding of the difference between weather and climate, let's talk about precipitation and wind currents a little bit more, and how their patterns vary across the planet. If we look at our planet, we see constant cycles of rising and falling air, which are created as a result of precipitation and temperature patterns in different latitudes. Let's start with the Hadley cell, which starts around 0 degrees and goes until 30 degrees. At the equator, the heat causes hot, humid air to rise. The evaporated water in the air falls back down as rain, making the air really dry. This hot, dry air then moves, cools, and falls back down at 30 degrees. The next cell, called the feral cell, has cooled, dry air falling down at 30 degrees, which then sweep across the earth and warm up. As it warms again, it rises around 60 degrees. The final cell, called the polar cell, has warmer air rising at 60 degrees. Similar to the Hadley cell, it starts to cool down as it travels sideways, before finally falling back down at the poles. To recap, wherever there is hot air rising, we generally have high precipitation. This translates to lower atmospheric pressure. You see vegetation-rich areas in places like this. Where there's cool air falling, the pressure is higher. Areas in these regions generally have less vegetation, like desert areas or the pools. Now, this isn't quite exact. There are a variety of other factors that also contribute, such as the Coriolis effect. But you can see how wind currents and precipitation, along with how the sun heats the earth, contribute to the various diversity of biomes we have on our planet. So the next time you step outside, take a moment to appreciate all that goes on to making things the way they are. Thanks for watching. Want to learn more? Stay tuned for more videos.